Hello to our PsyQ and NEPHEW community and welcome to today's webinar, Cultural Competence Laying the Foundation. Thank you all very much for joining us today. My name is Mark Takalowski and I am a Senior Medical Science Liaison for Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization Incorporated. I'll be serving as the moderator for today's exciting discussion featuring Dr. Valerie Purdy Greenaway and Dr. Betsy Bennett. Dr. Valerie Purdy Greenaway is an Associate Professor of Psychology at Columbia University in the City of New York. She is a social psychologist who conducts research regarding people with threatened identities and examines the consequences of their experiences for intergroup relations. The primary goal of her research is to deepen our understanding of culture and intergroup relations in society and to eventually inform educational and public policies. Dr. Betsy Bennett is an adjunct assistant professor at the Adams School of Dentistry at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she teaches and conducts research. She is also a clinical health psychologist who develops content and interventions in the healthcare space that are designed to help patients and healthcare providers navigate difficult conversations and situations. Over the next hour, Dr. Purdy Greenaway and Dr. Bennett will discuss the origins, components, and importance of cultural competence and its role in healthcare. This presentation is sponsored by Otsuka and Lundbeck. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kim Lonergan. Thank you, Mark. As the lead for Otsuka's FMA team, I am proud to share with our audience today our statement and commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you for joining us today for this exciting and important discussion on cultural intelligence, and we invite you to continue to join us at PsyQ and NEPHEW as we develop additional content related to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the future. We're going to lay the foundation today. And what that means is the first thing we have to do is kind of get our words straight. When you hear cultural competence, I think it's really common to think, haven't I heard terms like that before? And we have a bunch of them here on the slide. So cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness, cultural intelligence, cultural humility, which if you were listening closely, we mentioned in the objectives, we're gonna talk about that some more. And you know, cultural competence, here we define as a journey towards competence, working with and between diverse cultural situations and contexts. Cultural intelligence is defined as a person's ability to function effectively in culturally diverse contexts and you know, may predict our performance in tasks and creative endeavors on multicultural teams. So yeah, you know, I I guess the point I want to make with this, and Valerie, feel free to jump in. This can sound really overwhelming, like, gosh, do we really, you know, are we getting into the weeds and the difference between this and this and this? But what I want you to hopefully experience as we go through the slides is to not get overwhelmed with the terms. We're laying the foundation, like we said, introducing you to some of the different but related terms here. And it, it's all going to start to make sense and hopefully feel very doable to you. Yeah. And I love the idea that it's really a journey. So you're constantly learning as you interact with different individuals. You're constantly trying to develop sort of a set of tools. And so what we're doing today is sort of sharing with you the, the building blocks of that toolkit. But there really isn't a person that has sort of reached the zenith of cultural competence. Every day, I always think about what can we be doing differently and better? And so the, I think the idea of a journey is a really important one. So the important thing to realize here is that there are different dimensions of cultural competence, and it depends on the context, the leadership capability, the environment that you're around, that's going to shape the very definition of what cultural competence means. So cultural competence is the ability to work and communicate effectively with individuals from culturally diverse backgrounds, including recognizing and respecting diversity through our words and actions in all contexts. So what are some of the examples of this? So in the example on the business setting, that can include cultural intelligence, it can include intercultural communication competence, which just simply means being able to understand different cultures and being able to engage in deep, thoughtful communication. 
It can be personal adjustments and formation of interpersonal relationships in culturally different settings. But also in the context of healthcare, it can mean something slightly different, particularly when you're working with patients. And I'm sure Dr. Bennett will have more to say about this. But the ability to make accurate physical assessments and collect health data from culturally diverse patients and it also is the use of cultural competence to improve patient quality care, satisfaction, and treatment adherence. Back to Valerie's point about the, that sort of, sort of second piece of that last slide, you know, how does cultural competence sort of pull through in a healthcare context? And, you know, really what we're talking about is being able to interact skillfully with patients who are different from ourselves and then knowing having that confidence that that skill can lead to more positive provider patient interactions and so that's a really important sort of link because you know we're going to talk a little bit later about the sort of natural curiosity that we all have that's part of our openness as human beings and to really lean on that to help us become more skilled in interacting with patients who are different from ourselves, but also just knowing that, wow, that natural curiosity that makes me want to know more about someone who's different from myself, that can actually make me a better provider and improve outcomes for my patient. And it's, it's kind of a win for everybody. And you know, it, you see a little banner on the bottom there that there is some recognition now across the country where some states are even requiring some cultural competence knowledge among their healthcare providers. Well, as we as we sort of start a deeper dive, I think it's important to think about this idea that it's been well recognized and that it's critical to the provision of healthcare. So this is really the the idea to help us just understand exactly why is it important? Why are we really digging in and leaning into cultural competence right now? Well, one, we know that it has the potential to reduce health disparities. In almost virtually every society, there are members of majority groups, there are members of minority groups, and along almost every dimension from race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, gender, there are various different disparities. And the idea is that we can look at it at a population level, but we can also look at it at a sort of more individual level, whether it's in our clinics and in our hospitals. And one thing that we know is that higher levels of cultural competence tend to be associated with reducing health disparities. So if you want to start to see closes in those gaps, whether it's in your clinic, whether it's in a hospital, when it's, whether it's in other healthcare settings, one thing you might want to think about is the degree of cultural confidence of everyone in that environment. So that's one reason why it's important. The second is fostering cross-cultural communication. And what this means is that Oftentimes, when we think of cultural competence, healthcare providers say, well, I have to learn another language now. I might have to learn another language from another country. I might have to sort of pick up Rosetta Stone. That's not what, what we mean here. What we mean here is you're able to foster sort of communication. It could be nonverbal communication. It could be working with an interpreter. But what it does is that it fosters communication across different groups. And one of the things that, that we know is there's lots of research on same race, same ethnicity, same religion, same gender providers. People by and large prefer to have providers that share their own identity, but that's not always gonna happen. But even when it doesn't happen, you can foster cross-cultural communication and that will continue to improve healthcare. Third, it can improve access to simply better care. One of the things we also know is that one of the main reasons why people who need healthcare don't go is because they don't feel comfortable. They may not trust the environment. They may not sort of trust that you understand what they need. And so to the extent that you are increasing trust, 
increasing communication, people are just simply going to come back. And that's really what you need people to do, particularly in the context of, of health, right? Is we want to be able to increase compliance. We want to be able to get people returning, coming to appointments on time, volunteering. We want people absorbing health information in our society. And all of that ultimately means better care. So that's it's another reason why cultural competence is important.